Welcome, one and all, to the damage pre-poor. I am John Iderell, and we will be talking about Donald Trump. Uh, still, weeks in now, he came up with this new stance on abortion, and the issue with it is that even the slightest bit of a tough question just makes him absolutely fall apart. So we're going to have that video for you in a little bit. It's very fun. Uh, not only because he looks bad on the issue, but also I think there's more evidence contained therein of his brain utterly falling apart. So we've got that for you, and he's not alone in this, actually. We've got a couple of right-wing uh, pundits, grifters, who are being weirdly honest about where they stand on abortion. And so that's going to be fun. We're going to be talking about that in a little bit, too. We've got a whole bunch of little news updates to give you. But I'm going to be starting off the pre port in just a moment with some really sad men online. Um, I understand that nobody cares about this war that I am pointlessly waging to try to bring some men back from the brink of where they've been led by these grifters in terms of the bizarre thoughts they have about mascul masculinity and how you should live. And I'm trying to fight back against that because I'm lucky enough to have, you know, a, a, a life that is successful uh, in the way that I think a life should be. But that also, from the point of view of them, they say men are supposed to have certain things. Well, I've been lucky enough that I have that sort of life. And I think that maybe it's an example that can help some of these men who are being led astray. Um, but along the way, we have to point out those who are not good role models for them. And so I'm going to do that. But anyway, uh, we're going to do that in just one moment. If you're just joining us now, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, very glad to have you aboard. Uh, thank you, by the way, to the many new subscribers. So we, we hit 900,000 subscribers on the channel uh, a couple of days ago. And I said then, what I've been saying for a little bit, we want to get to a million subscribers before... Brian Neal is mentioning it right there. We want to get to a million subscribers by the general election. Well, I can say we're at like almost 905,000. So we're making very good progress. Still a long way to go. But if you're not a subscriber yet, consider becoming one. And with that, let's jump into some sad people. So I want to start off... This is a smaller one. This isn't a big... Uh, like, you know, influencer or whatever. It's just a, it's a behavior. And it bothers me, okay? So there's a new show that came out. It's the Fallout TV show. Don't spoil it. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to. I like the Fallout games. I, I think the star Ella Purnell was really good in Yellow Jacket. So I'm going to watch it. But before we get to that, I saw this thing on Reddit going around. And it's someone who apparently was so bothered, not by the show but by one of the pr pieces of promotional art that they have to modify it, okay? And so this is Game Characters AI who said, Quick and dirty, but that flattness bothered me enough. Hashtag Fallout on Prime, hashtag Fallout. And I'm glad that you put the, the hashtags, because I'm sure Fallout on Prime wants this to come up when you search for Fallout. So the idea is that actress Ella Purnell, who is depicted there just looking the way she does, so bothered this person, and I'm going to guess that it's a man, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to guess that, that they had to, like, inflate like a latex balloon her legs and butt. Because the way she actually looks is so annoying that it just gets under your skin and it bothers you, and you just have to do something. She's a beautiful woman. She's an objectively beautiful woman. How does this bother you so much that you have to modify that? And then you're like, it's not even that they did it for themselves. Like, I would enjoy this more. The world needs to see my creation. I have fixed her. She was beautiful. She was beautiful and also real. And I know that real beauty, not very popular online among some of these people. That's, I don't know this person, I'm not going to speak for whoever that is, or the account, maybe it's multiple people, I don't know. But there's this group online that are like deeply resentful towards women because they can't have relationships and they can't have sex and all that. But rather than become like a little bit more open to not just chasing the glorified ideal that you've seen online, they sort of like double down on it. I'm not saying that's what this is, because again, I don't know this person, and based on that image, I don't want to, but... It's a weird thing. But anyway, I also do want to give credit to uh, Brandon, who replied, I put a $100 bill in your shower last week, and it's still there, bro. That is funny. Again, I don't know about the personal hygiene of the person, and I don't particularly care. It's more about the, like, when I, everybody does certain stuff online. 
so I mostly obviously post, you know, about politics uh, at patreon.com slash John and Roll. I do other stuff. Uh, like I put out my MCU tier list, all the movies, all the shows, I put it out in podcast form. Uh, so, and I also put out original uh, fantasy and sci-fi, but mostly politics. But if I didn't, let's say I couldn't talk about politics anymore. I got a gag order. There are so many things I would do with my online time. And then I look at what other people choose to do, and I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. That said, that is less weird, I think, than what I'm about to show you. And it's from someone who, unfortunately, is an influencer. It's Andrew Tate, who I think the way Andrew Tate operates right now is he has a thing, a, a website, that generates random topics. And then his challenge for the day is how to figure out how to make caring about that topic means that you're a beta. So the topic for today was food and cooking. So of course he says, food's awful and eating sucks. I eat the bare minimum and I'm and as fast as possible. I hate eating. I hate feeling full. So you don't like eating and you don't want to be full, do you want to stop? I don't know. Men who think cooking makes them manly are cocks, afraid of the cage, desperate to validate a non-existent masculinity. Imagine how stupid you have to be to find food entertaining. Literally embarrassing. You can just write embarrassing because it's a concept. It's not really literal. It's not even really metaphorical. It's just a concept. You can just say it's embarrassing. Literally embarrassing and embarrassing mean literally the same thing. But anyway, um, can you imagine living your fucking life like this? Like, okay, let's say that this is the way you are. Okay, something happened to you, it broke you, whatever. You lost your mind and this is who you are. That's fine. But to imply that that's how you should be, that if you're not like that, you're a cuck, it's so bizarre. Like, I understand that they think that, like, that they come up with this concept of the cuck because the cuck is the embarrassing one. They're embarrassed, humiliated. You should be humiliated because of the stuff you post online because that's fucking insane. Now, look, I'm not stupid. I understand why he does this. It, like, he doesn't have the website that generates a topic, but it is something like that. He first you know, got some notoriety online for, like, asserting that he's never watched Star Wars or whatever. It's, it's all the same thing. The Star Wars and the cooking is all the same thing. It's, okay, uh, there's a lot of men with a lot of anxiety about masculinity and they don't have a lot of self-esteem, self-esteem. Let me just make them think, oh, this is another thing I should worry about. And then they'll flock to me because now they're worried and they're anxious and they'll, well, this guy seems to have it together. I guess I'll follow him and then I'll feel better. Finally, I'll have confidence. I won't be scared anymore. That's what the entire strategy is. It's very transparent. And as I always say, I don't care about this individual. I don't care about any of these influencers. What I care about is the men that they're ruining for profit. His goal is to make men weak and insecure and anxious and depressed, but also entitled and hateful and filled with lust, but also jealousy and to just, oh, I just need something. That's what you get as a man when you follow people like this. And if you think that's going to make you a more appealing romantic partner or business partner, whatever it is that you want, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you with that. I feel bad for you. I can say that. <sighs> Downing on cooking. Anyway. Okay, uh, very briefly, and I only mention this because I am sure that it is going to be the impetus for a lot of conspiracy theories. The FBI has opened a criminal investigation into the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Which I'm sure many people are going to baselessly say is a sign that it was some secret... Jewish conspiracy theory or something. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. Um, it, probably you have to. Probably you have to do this sort of due diligence. We'll see. I don't know. See, what I'm doing is not baselessly arguing things for which I have no evidence. Even though all of the incentives are for you to do the opposite. Anyway, a couple more stories. Uh, if you're just joining us now, please hit the like button. Thank you very much. By the way, I mentioned earlier that on at patreon.com slash John I put up a video of my a tier list, all the movies, all the shows. I am going to post at some point, I'm gonna wait a little bit. I want to post a screenshot of my tier list because I have a feeling it will infuriate many people. Because some of the stuff I consider to be S tier for the MCU 
is not widely liked at all. Um, but I'm very curious what you would all do your uh, rankings, uh, how you would all do your rankings. Um, what's S tier for you? Is there an S plus tier? I have one S plus tier thing for the MCU. See if anybody can guess it. Anyway, uh, I can't fix my audio. This is just a Google Pixel uh, 8. This is the art audio that it is, unfortunately. There's no separate mic. There's no separate technology or anything like that. Anyway. Okay, let's see. Um, John, you're going to love Fallout. I hope that I will. I like the Fallout games, and I like that actress, so we'll see. And, and you know what? More importantly, I like that actress, how she actually is in reality. Anyway, uh, okay, so let's see. We had some good news from, okay, I believe it was, was it Missouri? It was trying to pass an anti-trans bill. State legislator gave a speech, sort of calling on people to just have a little bit of empathy, and it actually killed the bill. And that was good news. I don't remember, I think it was Missouri. I could be remembering wrong. Maybe it was Indiana. I, I apologize. It's been a few days, and I have dad brain. But uh, the governor of Kansas also veto vetoed gender-affirming trans youth care ban. So she had done this, Laura, this is Laura Kelly, by the way, had done this last year. Um, it it can be dizzying, you know, outside of your own, no, Andy Q, it's a different person, outside of your own state, following all of what's happening on this topic in terms of legislation, executive orders, is very, very difficult because there is so much happening all of the time. Um, but it is important, I think, to occasionally check in when these bills pass, but also when they fail. And so in this particular case, uh, thankfully, Governor of Kansas did the right thing. Always shocked to see in some of these instances that, like, that the governor of Kansas is a Democrat. It's just, like, you, it's easy to forget that, like, anomalies like that happen. Uh, my S, was it Montana? Was it Montana? Nebraska. Nick White is correct. It was Nebraska. Uh, my S plus is not Loki. I liked Loki fine. I didn't actually watch the second season of Loki. Um, but no, my S plus, I think most people like my S plus, but some of my S's are uh, roundly attacked. Anyway. Okay, let's see. Let's move on to our main topic. Well, you know what? We still need 100 likes. And I think with over 2,100 of you there, being able to scrounge up 100 likes shouldn't be that hard. We're going to be talking about abortion, people. Okay? It's not Winter Soldier. It's a perfectly fine movie, but anyway. Um... Galfar, I would like to see your ranking, actually. Send it to me. It's not She-Hulk. No, uh, I like She-Hulk, but no. Um, okay, so really fast, before we get to our main story, assuming we had to a thousand likes, is this show mostly just about games? Sometimes, Sherry, I apologize. But now we're going to talk about abortion. And not just abortion, because both Matt Walsh and Charlie Kirk are openly admitting, yeah, people don't actually agree with us. So it's good that they're willing to do that. And honestly... More power to them, because normally the incentive would be just lie to your audience and tell them, no, everybody agrees with us. Uh, even though the polls don't show that. Just everybody agrees with us. And that's generally what they do on a lot of topics and support for Trump. They all pretend that he's more popular than he is to set up the fact that people will think when he loses another election that it was stolen or something. But in this particular case, Matt Walsh says that the, uh, mo the, the positions that he holds or at least pretends to hold uh, on abortion, immigration, and uh, gun control are extremists. Quote, it's not where most people are. And he was actually talking, and by the way, he sort of understands that. He still thinks that they should take these positions, including Carrie Lake, who had previously uh, supported that Arizona bill, the 1864 bill. She is now turning on that to save herself politically. He's saying she shouldn't do that, which seems like really bad advice. It is, it is consistent, I guess, if you believe that, if you believe anything that he says, he actually believes. It is sort of consistent that he thinks she should stay solidly in support of this horrendous 1864 bill that if she does that will almost certainly result in her uh, not getting into the Senate. So I, I agree with him on that. But anyway, I want to move to Charlie Kirk because Charlie Kirk says there are positions that we hold that are unfortunately untenable with the American people. So look, I'm not going to watch like a whole Charlie Kirk show or something. It is entirely possible that he pivoted from that to something else about why they should never ever change. Um, but it is good that he can do that self-analysis and that he understand. Look, it's not hard, difficult self-analysis to do. You can look at almost any poll going back literally decades, longer than he's been alive. They have tried to win people over and they have failed. Now, they're not going to suddenly change on that. And importantly, 
but while both of them say people don't agree with us, if they could, they would snap their fingers and that would be the law. Fuck everyone who doesn't agree with us, including conservatives who don't agree with them. So not a lot of credit in that area. And by the way, I will say, I sort of understand that you can believe people don't agree with us, so there's work to be done. You don't have to simply say, people don't agree with us, so what are you going to do? There, there are things that I think the American people need to evolve on. Chris Smith, thank you for becoming a Tier 3 member. I hope to see you in our members' hangout uh, next week. Uh, but thank you for being here. Um, so, for instance... Uh, I think that the you know the, the, the fight to stop climate change, for instance, that's an issue that not a lot of people up until just a few years ago had thought about. It's somewhat complex in terms of the science, and obviously in America, you know, we're not great at science education. So if you just simply looked at a poll about what people think about it on day one, and then just give up because people don't agree with it, well, that wouldn't make sense, you know? And, and also the stakes are so high. I don't have any personal vested interest in people changing their mind on this, other than the fact that I want to live on a planet that sustains human life. But so if people didn't agree, I mean, granted now people do agree with us, but if they didn't, we would still want to fight on that. In this, it is slightly a different thing though, because they have been trying for decades and decades and decades. People have been trying to convince the American people to turn against reproductive freedom since before both of these individuals were born. There have been wide, very well-funded social movements to try to do that. Uh, and again, in terms of the stakes, they think, God, we have to keep fighting, even though these people don't agree with us and have it for decades and decades to stop people from having rights that they've had their whole lives. So the stakes are slightly different, too. So anyway, it is good that they can have this sort of moment of clarity and honesty. The fact that they want to push through that to force onto the country the revocation of these rights kind of sucks, unfortunately. But I want to turn now to what I promised, and that is going to be this, assuming I can get the... Audio to work. Let's see if this will work. Which one is Here we go. Okay, so Donald Trump being asked about his position on abortion, which changes every five minutes. Here we go. Over the last few decades, Mr. President, you have both considered yourself pro-choice and pro-life. Which one is it? Well, you know exactly which one it is. And when you I was know. in New York and when I was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan, you know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done, and we got it done, and I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. Over the last few decades, okay. Mr. President, you so, have both considered yourself pro-choice and... Every part of that is incredible. Uh, so first of all, you you know which it is. Well, no, we, we, we don't know which it is because you are changing very rapidly on this. But then I'm an, every single part of this is amazing. So uh, I'm very, very much like Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was a Democrat, you know. Uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, notably, and I Googled it just to be sure, was a Republican, um, Republican president. I think, okay, I am going to try to extend to, to Donald Trump a level of understanding for the dementia that he's experiencing, more than I probably should in that. I think he thinks the term Ronald Reagan Democrat describes Ronald Reagan and not Democrats who crossed over to supporting Ronald Reagan. I think that's what is messing with his brain, but he wasn't a Democrat. Donald Trump, by the way, in the late 90s, said he wouldn't outlaw late-term abortion. Now, if you want to say, I changed as I aged, okay. Now, granted, in the late 90s, he was already an old man. So, okay, you can still change. You could change in your 60s. You could change in your 70s. But would you like to explain why? Like, what was that process like? You went from believing no restriction whatsoever on abortion. He was a fairly extreme pro-choice person to now claiming that they're killing babies after birth or whatever and they should be locked up for it. So, what's the... Yeah, you, you can change even into your 80s. Could you explain why that happened at that late date? He's not doing that. He's not doing that at all. Also, I did what no one said could be done. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, we said that we could be, it could be done. All you have to do is get a bunch of jackass religious conservatives on the Supreme Court and boom, it's gone. No legal argument necessary. We, didn't, we said it shouldn't be done. That doesn't mean it can't be done. And it didn't take courage to do it. There's literally no consequences. They're more insulated from consequences for their actions than maybe even Donald Trump. 
So the whole thing is ridiculous. I, the fact that he thinks that Ronald Reagan was a Democrat, I feel like that should be kind of a headline thing because he was a Republican. And I feel like almost everyone knows that he was a Republican. But again, his brain isn't one of the concerns in the election. The quality and status of his brain is not a thing that people are worried about. But anyway, the brain rot aside, this is a demonstration of the difficult road for him. He has he has tried to find a position that he can stand in on abortion, but it doesn't it doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Once you press it, it's like and again he's bragging about killing Roe v. Wade. We we've already said he cannot avoid an opportunity to do that. He will keep providing uh, fodder for the political ads, and this is really going to hurt him. And that is just a damn shame. Now, unfortunately, there's a lot more that I would like to say about this. Uh, I am I have a feeling this will come up on the full show. Francesca Fiorentini will be here. Of course, we're launching into the Hush Money trial, so I have a feeling Donald Trump will be a topic of conversation. So everyone, um, uh, definitely tune into that on your way out. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. Thank you as always, and I'll talk to you soon.